Hey Ron, welcome to Fanglade Farm. This is the mid-spring October 12, 2012 update. Here are some of the activities that we've been doing in the last two weeks. Um, we've been generally getting a bit more rainfall so we've had to release a fair bit of water into the swale and the willows in the swale are now doing quite well. Um, onto the berries, we've been moving a fair few of the strawberries around and some of our berries are now in fruit. These are some currants and our blueberries are actually in flower still. And we're getting some elderberry flowers now which are very good. A mate of mine makes very good elderberry flower champagne. Should be getting some gooseberries this year too. We haven't had gooseberries in the past so they look like they've um, set fruit quite well. Uh, we've also got a Jostaberry. Um, I haven't actually tried that one yet either. Onto the um, fruit trees. The almonds have actually set fruit and you can see the almonds are actually uh, ripening now. They're some of the very earliest fruit trees here. Some of the predator insects are starting to come out and about too which is good. Onto the apples, um, we should get a good crop of apples this year. We've got 26 different varieties. Some of them are um, dessert apples, some of them cooking, and some are cider. Usually if um, you don't like the flavour of an apple or it's not good eating, you can um, either cook it or turn it into cider. That's a bit of wallaby damage on an apricot. The, the wallabies here are actually um, quite fond of uh, apricots for some reason, they tend to rip the tops off the trees which is why you'll see a lot of our fruit trees actually have uh, wire cages around them, it's just to stop the, the wallabies. The cherries are also flowering prolifically, um, we have to keep the cockatoos off them because the cockatoos actually eat the flowers so fortunately they haven't come across these trees yet. That um, stellar is about four meters high but they'll, um, they'll do quite, quite good fruit set. And it's good actually having a fair few different varieties. We've um, we've had um, similar varieties before, and it's better to have a diverse range. Onto the citrus, there's quite a lot of citrus this year with all the rain. The medlars are very good too. They're um, quite good um, cropping fruit. Uh, with those, if you don't like the flavour of them, you can't eat them fresh off the tree. You actually have to wait until they uh, get a bit squashy, and then you can eat them. This is a kangaroo apple, it's uh, one of the native fruit trees here. It's um, got quite edible fruit, so it's a bit um, sour though. The kiwi, kiwi fruit and the um, passion fruit have quite good um, climbing uh, facilities. There's a locate. The locates in Melbourne are actually um, f uh, flowering and have set fruit, so ours are a couple of weeks behind. There's more med medlars. Um, the mulberries are very behind here too, but they're a very hot weather sort of plant, so it's a bit a bit um, behind here. The nashi pears are actually doing exceptionally well. Uh, we've had a bit of curly leaf this year, um, after three wet years of rain. Uh, we didn't spray copper this year, um, because we've sprayed uh, twice a year in the past, and it's been a waste of time, they still get a curly leaf. What we find happens is the, um, the leaves actually drop off the tree, uh, the um, ones that are infected with the fungus and the new leaves form. So go figure. This is a Packham's Triumph, that pear, and it's got a red spot on it, so if anyone knows what that is I'd be really appreciative. I'm actually uh, on the mindset that I should just cut it off and burn it. It doesn't look like a scale, it actually looks like some sort of virus or fungus. The plums are actually set very well this year too, um, there'll be a very large crop of them. You can even see on the King Billy there's a, actually a fruit forming. The quinces are flowering for the first time this year too, so I'm, I'm very excited about quince. It's a beautiful fruit but it needs to be stewed with a bit of sugar. You can see a bit more wallaby damage of the quince. Um, we've just finished this um, raised bed for our strawberries, that's about um, half a metre deep of mulch and they, they'll love it. We get a, a mug full a day of um, fresh strawberries from about December through to about April. Some of the flowers here, um, being a forest environment, it's quite acidic soil so 
the azaleas and the camellias do quite well as well as the rhododendrons. Some of the native creepers are um, starting to come back to now that we've um, cleared a bit of the um, the, sap, the, the sap length of the eclipse. You can see the rhododendrons are doing quite well. We've got quite a lot of ground cover this year and the more effort we put into it the more we're getting out of it. You can see alfalfa is an absolute gun and it's um, got very very deep roots. Some of the herbs are starting to sneak out into the ground cover too which is good. That's a Californian poppy. Um, we've also got comfrey spread right throughout the food forest. It does very well. Daffodils and donquils are also in, um, in flower at the moment. And this is one of the native um, ground covers. It's a dichondra. It's kidney bean grass. Forget-me-nots are a good sign of um, underground water supplies and they're um, doing quite well. Also the, the moss is actually in flower. You can see the little red heads on it. There's a bit more vetch in um, forget-me-not and they're doing very well. Salad burnet's one of my favourite herbs. It's um, it self seeds prolifically and you'll find um, you just find it all over the place and it's actually it's an edible green that you can add to your cellars right through winter. Some of the other herbs here too, we've got curry plant and echinacea that bounced back from the dead or actually it disappeared completely and then re-sprung over um, spring. Chamomile is quite a good ground cover too. We used to have some established under the um, food forest but it got mowed unfortunately. And we've got about five different varieties of rhubarb here. It's a very great good plant. The valerian's another one that was completely dead and I thought it was finished and it's um, bounced back. The hugel culture beds are doing quite well. The blackberries are in leaf and the raspberries in leaf. I think we'll, we won't get much of a crop of raspberries this year but we'll certainly get um, quite a lot of blackberries. Um, with the food forest too, we've got a lot of self-seeded fruit trees. They're just all over the place. Um, they're just popping up everywhere. I used to feed um, apples to the local wombat and it'd just go out and do its business and the following year you'd find a fruit tree. A food forest can be exactly like a, a natural forest and once it gets a, enough diversity and enough um, visiting wildlife it um, just spreads prolifically. Those potatoes won't be ready until about um, March I think at this stage. They're the raised vegetable beds. Um, the self-seeded um, vegetables are also the same, we just let them go 